by $1,183. And property tax will continue to double every five years. And you will have to wait a very long 28 years to do the same thing, double your income. You must work hard for 28 years to make up for each of these five-year doublings of property tax. Oh, oh, there's an update, folks. Hang on. Update. We just received our 2007 estimated tax. Forget the 20 years where property taxation exceeds income. Our newest data shows property tax will exceed income in just 14 years. Doomsday is now six years sooner. 14 years instead of 20 years when property tax exceeds income. Also, forget that property taxation will double in just five years. Yeah, just X that out. It will now double in just four years. The taxation and appeal system is based on garbage in, amplified garbage out, and does not work. You may also listen to the audio recording of our farcical appeal given by the county in 2006 at sinister.net slash tilde wayne slash tax. And, by the way, the same man who gave us this farcical appeal is back in action this year. He was seen Monday, September 17th, 2007, back in action reviewing appeals. The same man never allowed us to present our evidence. You may also listen to the audio recording of our initial Utah State Tax hearing on August 2nd, 2007 at Simister.net slash tilde wayne slash tax. While we were allowed to present some information, absolutely no weight was given toward our side of the presentation. Everyone we've talked to on the street feels that property taxation is out of control and in an impossible state. And again, back in 2002, when we had a whopping 82% property tax increase, our data was discarded. And again, back in 2006, our data was discarded. And for our initial hearing given on August 2nd, 2007, our data was discarded. The county uses rules which are based on garbage data. The county refuses to listen or look at the most important data and standard of all, affordability. Whatever happened to this standard? Here are the assessor's comparable properties. 570 North Columbus Street. Why is it not comparable? Because the home is located on relatively flat land with no similar mountain slope as is 584 Cortez. This photo clearly shows the much flatter land along Columbus Street. There's both a front and backyard available for family living. Not so with 584. There's virtually no front yard or backyard. It has a fenced-in yard. 
Not so with 584. There is little, if any, danger of cars crashing into the property. Not so with 584. We've had two incidents of cars on our property. The property has rain guttering on all sides. Not so with 584. It is an up-down duplex. Land is more efficiently used for up-down construction. Not so with 584. No proof was furnished to prove this property suffered similar termite damage or foundation settling as experienced with 584. No proof was shown that flood or leaking roof damage occurred as is experienced with 584. This property is down the hill further and does not experience LDS helicopter flight noise levels as loudly as 584. It's in a more upscale neighborhood. It has sidewalks and located on a street that is not hodgepodge. Five hundred nine North Cortez Street. It is not comparable because it is not on a mountain slope, as is five eighty four. It has usable yard space. It is a newer property. It has been recently landscaped. It is not in the direct flight path of the LDS hospital helicopter, and situated at a lower elevation, which would reduce noise. Location is more upscale. It has sidewalks and located on a street that is not hodgepodge. There is little, if any, danger of cars crashing into the property. 504. No proof was furnished to prove this property suffered similar termite damage or foundation settling as experienced with 584. No proof was shown that shows flood or leaking roof damage occurred, as is experienced with 584. It has a full concrete driveway. 584 doesn't. Seventy one East Girard. Not comparable for these reasons. It's been completely remodeled from bottom to top, wall to wall. There's no danger of cars coming down onto this property. This home has no similar steep mountain terrain. It is an up-down duplex. It has an all-concrete driveway. This 71 East Girard property also has modern central air conditioning, 584 has only a swamp cooler. No proof was furnished to prove this property suffered similar termite damage or foundation settling as experienced with 584. No proof was shown that shows flood or leaking roof damage occurred as is experienced with 584. Personal research suggests the owner received negative valuation. The home was probably seized for non-payment of taxes. These negative valuations do not appear in any of the available public information sources. Or are these negative valuations ever averaged into the property valuations used by Salt Lake County? This we interpret for what it exactly is. Deliberate deception. Garbage in, amplified garbage out. Another comparable property was deliberately omitted by the county. This home was used as a comparable in our original appeal. Where did comparable number two go? Valuation 
$199,000 date, January 26, 2005. This home, similar to 71 Girard, was probably seized from the owner due to non-payment of taxes. After remodeling, this home was completely regutted and a new top story added. Property valuation was determined to be $199,000. Our 584 property has had no major remodeling. Was this 77 Girard property deliberately dropped to make the 584 property appear more valuable? We have no doubt that this indeed was the case. This 77 Girard property is also similar to 584 in that two cars have come down onto this property. Nevertheless, this property was dropped by the county. Utah has consistently taken top ranking in bankruptcy rates. Further, bankruptcies during 2007 showed a 25% increase. While bankruptcy rate should be falling due to new federal law, Utah's bankruptcy rates are rising by 25%. None of this data is being factored in by the county. All comparisons seem to fall into the same categorization. Citywide comparisons are sorted and invariably made against new properties. Old properties with considerable depreciation are suddenly compared as if they are the same as brand new properties. Comparisons are made against new properties which are energy efficient, have large lots, have modern kitchens and baths. Modern homes are built with more improvements, improvements that older homes cannot match, like planned neighborhoods, more bathrooms, underground utilities, larger floor, garage, and storage space. Such homes utilize new energy efficient construction and meet safe modern electrical coating, which older properties cannot do. Comparisons of old against new are incorrect and invalid comparisons. Take a close look at these 2007 new home prices. 282 9, 295-293-5, 296-9, 303-9, all of these brand new 2007 homes are well below the county's 2006 valuation of 584 Cortez, a 45-year-old property. All of these new homes are selling in 2007 well below the county's 2006 valuation of 584 Cortez Street. Nothing will improve home valuation more than remodeling the kitchen, so I'm told. Well, I guess it's true. But 584 has not updated the kitchen since the home was built. There are no kitchen improvements. It has the original ovens, the original stoves, no new sinks or cupboards, no dishwasher. Both sides of the duplex are identical. Both oven clocks are broken. It's the original electric stove. The magical effective tax rate.
according to some, is set. According to others, it changes. Oh, it's very magical. For some of the rest of us, it's not so magical. In 2007, it was used most effectively to hide a very sharp property valuation increase. In 2007, a 0.65 effective tax rate was set. It made most property taxes actually go down, even though their property valuation shot up. A neighbor's duplex at 579 Northeast Capital had a decrease in its tax of $72, yet a 14% property valuation increase. A physician's home owned by two physicians, 702 North Cortez, had a property tax decrease of $226 and a valuation increase of almost 9%. A neighbor's duplex, 564 North Cortez, had a property tax decrease of $73 but the property valuation jumped up by almost 14%. A neighborhood home, 588 North Cortez, a decrease of $48, yet a property valuation increase of 13%. And how did 584 property fare? Our 584 property, 584 North Cortez, had a tax increase of $36 with a property valuation increase, incredible, 19%. Was this a retaliatory move by the county because we appealed? We found no other neighboring property with a 19% valuation increase. Our 584 property had a tax increase of $36 with a property valuation increase of over 19%. We found no other property near us with that kind of property valuation increase. Was it a retaliatory move? We are persuaded that, indeed, it was. Before leaving, let's take a look at these magical past effective tax rates. 1998, 0.78, 99.82, 2000.78, 2001.79, mm, gets up there. 2004.83, but 2007 it crashes to 0.65. No other rate was lower than 2007's. From a high of 0.83%, it sinks to a low of 0.65% in 2007. No previous year had a lower effective tax rate than 2007. Was it to hide the fact that properties again skyrocketed with out-of-control valuation? If you answered yes, congratulations. You got the answer correct. In other words, despite the law, which reads you will be taxed according to property valuation, it just ain't so. Effective tax rate is very much a tool which controls property taxes. The question must then be asked, 
why hasn't this effective tax rate been utilized much earlier? Preventing the catastrophic property tax increases that have been dumped upon the average worker and the retired. Taxation rates which have been multiplied and compounded over the years. Taxation which exceeds the federal COLA. Taxes which are impossible to pay. Taxation which exceeded the COLA by not just a tiny bit but by astronomical numbers. Hey folks, the federal cost of living adjustment is a standard. Why isn't it being used? Residents voice ire over valuations. Huge tax surplus for Utah. We don't need the money, apparently. Oh, look at this. Water rates, 733% in the Salt Lake area as compared to other towns like Orem. 733% higher. $200 million surplus is now criticized. Values go through the roof. Will capital site add a $70 million building? I have no doubt it will. What started to be just earthquake proofing of the Capitol building turned into be a major remodeling and building program for the state capitol. My gosh, who would believe that would happen? Valuation of homes may shock you, Tons. They're already shocked. Housing market is still gloomy, and it's not bottomed yet. Here it is, 3rd of October, 2007, and it's still going down. A proper, as property values go up, appeals surge. Well, that's not surprising. Utah may hike gas tax to fund work on roads. Yet, do you know what? In the same issue of the paper, this appeared. State surplus is $260 million or more. Tax rates quintuple. $200 million surplus criticized just for education in the universities. Apparently, there are no standards. And let us continue. There are two ways to look at law. Letter of the law or spirit of the law. Letter of the law, well, an example. A traffic signal breaks down and locks in an all red condition. Letter of the law will issue tickets to all who go through the red signal. Spirit of the law, a traffic signal locks in an all red condition. Spirit of the law recognizes the broken condition and keeps traffic flowing. During appeals, letter of the law is being enforced. Despite the fact that the appeal system is broken. Applicable law. Only applicable law is being looked at. So is it presumptuous to ask why the effective tax rate wasn't used to fix a broken property taxation problem? It sure was in 2007. The effective tax rate tool has been there all along. And why? 
Why has garbage data been continuously fed into the county's computer database? Is it because of greed? The lush income from overtaxation is just so easy and nice. And look here, letter of the law says we can get away with it. Letter of the law says we can get away with it. Rich dad, poor dad. Values go through the roof. Residents voice ire over valuation. 